All right, well, let's get started. So today we'll do uh, derived dimensions. Uh, I guess the second part of it. So derived dimensions. Uh, mainly it's going to be about force type stuff. If you've taken physics, a lot of this will be uh, pretty straightforward. And if you haven't, um, just make sure you understand the, the formulas. Okay. Um, here we go. So let's talk about velocity first. The velocity. There, sorry, my handwriting is a little weird today. Is equal to the speed of a body or object. All right, so usually we denote a lowercase v. equal to capital L over T. Okay, acceleration. Is usually how much the speed increases. Or it could be it could be also be decreases if it's negative. When, it, when we slow down, that's a negative acceleration. V over time. So usually we denote that with uh, lowercase a equal to velocity over time, which is l over time squared. Okay, force is equal to the mass of the body. Multiplied by its acceleration. In physics, this is pretty, pretty common to see this, right? Especially physics one or university physics, and also in high school physics, S equal to M ma, right? Or M is your mass and A is your acceleration. Okay. Uh, usually, uh, force will be in newtons. So here are the notation for all the units. units SI actually sorry I'm not gonna do that there <clears throat> SI will be down here Imperial which is our our system Newtons. Imperially use pound of force. Usually I B U the lowercase F. Let me uh Make it a little bigger there. Shoot. Okay, base units.
Okay, base units would be for, for newtons. That's going to be in kilograms times mass No, kilograms times meters per second squared. There we go. Yeah, because kilograms is already mass, so that wouldn't make sense. Shit, one second. There we go. So let me make some space now that I realize this. You'll see when you get to higher sciences, if you haven't already seen it, we don't really use pound force very often. So we try to stick with um, newtons. So I'm going to move it down here. Okay, so the units would be pounds times feet per second squared or slug feet times feet per second squared. Okay. So anyway, let's move on to an example here. So find the force given mass and acceleration. So this question shouldn't be difficult. It's just making sure you know how the units go and where they're supposed to be. Okay, so here's the mass. Ten point four kilograms. Acceleration will be three point one four meters per second squared. Acceleration is always in meters per second squared, unless we're in uh, imperial. Probably feet per second squared. Okay. So to solve this question, all I want to see, like on a test or something, is write your formula. Write your units, right? So 10.4 kgs times 3.14 meters per second squared. So just multiply that out, and you should get about. Um, 32.7, right, then you'd multiply kg times meters over second squared, which is really just 32.7 newtons. Okay, and the questions will tell you how much to round, etc. So depending, it also could be in scientific or sig figs, depending on the question. We'll probably require that. Um, but anyway, so far, it's not too bad, right? There's your formula. There's the units combining, right? Newtons. Okay. Next one. Let's see here. Let's do uh, one about the rest, I guess. I think we have enough space here. Maybe. Thrust is the force used to push a body or object very quickly. Okay, so usually when we think of thrust, we think of uh, jets or airplanes, uh, ships, like uh, spaceships. 
that type of stuff, fighter, fighter jets. Here is the question. So an engine, An engine provides an acceleration on 0 0.06 meters per second squared. I don't know why that zero is floating, but give me a moment. There we go. If the body or object has a mass of 30,000 kilograms, what is the thrust produced? Okay, so 0 0.006 meters per second squared. So that unit should give you a hint that, yeah, it's acceleration. And of course, they told us. And we have mass, right? So we have M, we have A. So they want to know what is F, right? Because thrust is a force. They, they said that right here. So simply use. F equals MA, right? So that would be the mass, 30,000 kilograms times 0 0.06 meters per second squared. So this will be Yeah, 1800 um, yeah, newtons. Or if we don't if we show our step that would be uh, kg times meters per second squared, which is really 1800 newtons. But we can write that as uh, using a prefix, right? That's really just 1.8 kilonewtons. Lowercase, lowercase k, capital N. So the answer would be that F is 1.8 kilonewtons. As you see, it's the same question, right? You just gotta have to understand what is what and what's what are they asking for? Okay. Okay. You guys okay on these first two examples so far? Talk about mass. Mass is a measure of how much, how much matter an object contains. Okay parentheses here, it is not the same as weight. I don't know if you can read that, write it down here. Weight.
You guys know the difference between mass and weight? Is it uh, weight depending on like the gravity of wherever that object is? Yeah, that's basically true. Um, weight is basically mass times the gravity wherever you're at. So weight varies depending where you are. Mass will always be the same, right? So your weight on Earth is just the mass times Earth's gravity. So a force, so here's, it's also a force, right? Equal to the mass of an object multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. Little g, usually denoted by little g. So gravity, remember, is, is an acceleration. So weight, let's just do it here, weight is equal to mass times gravity. Just so we don't forget, mass on Earth is the same as mass on the moon, right? But weight on Earth does not equal the weight on the moon. So here's the gravity of Earth here. G sub Earth would be 9.81 meters per second squared. Gravity on the moon, G sub moon, is about 1.6 meters per second squared. Pretty, pretty big difference, right? Do an example here. Calculate the weight of a four point one two kilogram object on the Earth and the moon. Okay. So let's use subscript capital E here for Earth. So the weight on the Earth will be mass, will be the same, right? Times the gravity of Earth. So that would simply be the object's mass there, 4.12 kilograms times gravity of Earth, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. So we will get um, 40.4 kilograms meters per second squared, which is just 40.4 newtons. Now the weight on the moon, let's use a little bit of here. That would be simply just the same thing, mass times gravity, but you use the moon. Okay. So weight weight is technically a force. 
which is why we use newtons, right? Okay. So mass will be 4.12 kilograms times 1.6 meters per second squared. So nothing too crazy, right? So that would be 6.59 newtons. It's a very different forces. So I'm sure you feel pretty light on the moon. Do you have any questions on these types of problems? Nope. All right, let me send you the homework for this section and the last section from last from Wednesday, if you don't already have it. Just give me a second. And then we can use the rest of the time to ask questions and work on some problems. One second. But I did send you I did send you homework three, which was based on last past week's stuff. But we'll wait on four until we finish this. Okay, so temperature. This is measure. Of how hot or cold an object or substance is. Okay, so let's go over the different types real quick. So here's our scale. Freezing point. Point. Uh, forward. Forward. Freezing point of water. This is going to be boiling point. Okay. All right, so for imperial, we have Fahrenheit, which we've mentioned already. I'm sure you're very familiar with. And also ranking temperature for water in Fahrenheit. Right in our own American units, Fahrenheit, water freezes at 32, right? I assume you, you all know that already. The reason I prefer Celsius is because 
Celsius is based on freezing point of water and boiling point. So zero Celsius is automatically freezing. All right, so that's pretty easy to remember. It's, I know it's zero. Boiling point for Celsius would be 100. So no tempers in between in a regular day will always be between here, right? Usually. It could go below zero. I mean, there are cold places. But probably not going to pass boiling point on planet Earth. Right? Unless you're inside a volcano or something. Anyway, freezing, te uh, boiling temperature for Fahrenheit. Anybody know that off the top of their head? I know I don't know. I always forget. I think if I cooked more, maybe I'd remember. But then again, Fahrenheit is kind of lame. Two twelve, two hundred twelve degrees Fahrenheit is boiling. Ranking, to be honest, I've never really used, but here it is. R, 492 is freezing. 672 is your R here. All right. Okay, Kelvin. Kelvin is based around the idea of absolute zero. So... Freezing of water will be pretty far away from the zero of Kelvin, right? Because if you see zero degrees Kelvin, that means you hit absolute zero and there is nothing colder. And that's so cold that molecules have stopped moving, right? That's a theoretical temperature. I don't think it exists in nature, but we have come close to it in the lab. And a lot of weird stuff happens when you get close to absolute zero. But anyway. If we stick in Kelvin, that would just be 273K. Yeah, it's not very close to zero, right? It shouldn't be. Freezing water is nothing compared to absolute zero. 373K for boiling point. Okay. So Celsius is pretty much a standard all over the world. Kelvin we use for, we're talking about extreme temperatures like absolute zero. Fahrenheit we use in imperial units. Ranking as I don't think it's really often used, but anyway, we'll convert between all all four. It's not good. All right. All right, so you can convert between units by relating the freezing point. And boiling point. Of water on each scale. Absolute temperatures. We should talk about right down what we mentioned about Kelvin. And ranking. Okay. So 
so the Kelvins go. Again, is based on absolute zero. The point at which all atomic motion Kelvin scale is an SI unit and relates to the Celsius scale. So you can relate these guys because 273 Kelvin is the freezing point of water. So minus zero degrees Celsius. So that would be equal to 273, right? Which implies that the temperature in Kelvin should be a capital K, but all my K's look the same, is equal to the temperature of Celsius plus 273. So to go back and forth, you just, all you have to do is really add 273. So if my temperature is zero Celsius, well, that's the same as 273 Kelvin, right? There's no, uh, multiplication or anything. Now let's move on to ranking. Okay. The ranking scale was also developed as an absolute scale. but it was, it was related to uh, the Fahrenheit. Which is probably why I never used it. Fahrenheit. So basically, is 492 degrees ranking minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit, right? If we relate the freezing temperatures, that would be equal to 460, right? This would imply that the temperature and ranking, so it's an R, is equal to the temperature of Fahrenheit, just add 460. So if you have a temperature in Fahrenheit, let's say it's like 20 or whatever, add 460 and you get to ranking. Similar to how we did this guy. So these are easy to convert. Because they are already related. Related to each other, I mean. And again, the lowest temperature in Kelvin, in Kelvin and ranking is gonna be zero. So there should, you should never see a negative uh, Kelvin or negative ranking. That doesn't make sense. And also remember, no none of the temperature scales use prefixes, right? There's no 
kilo Celsius. It doesn't make sense. It's just the, the number. Okay. Now I forgot to write the conversion over here. Uh, for Fahrenheit, um, get from To go from uh, degrees or Celsius to Fahrenheit. Celsius to Fahrenheit. Use this formula here. So T temperature would become in, become Fahrenheit. You multiply your temperature in Celsius times nine fifths, and then you add 32. Number two, from Fahrenheit to Celsius, C Celsius would come from by, uh, let me see, 20, Oh, yeah. That's oh, all right. Yeah, here it is. Sorry. I don't trust my note here. This will be uh, the temperature in Fahrenheit. Minus 32 degrees. Let's actually just leave it as a number because there'll be degrees at the end. Times nine fifths. Okay. There's different right, ways to write this. It's all good. And we're almost out of time here. Um, so well, I guess next time we'll finish up the stuff for homework four. Um, do you guys have any questions about, about anything so far?